Officers of the Lagos State Environmental Sanitation Corps have commenced the demolition of shanties at the Adenija Adelis section of the third mainland bridge. Lagos State Government had announced on Sunday that it would remove more than 100 shanties along the water channel. Commissioner for the Environment, Tokumba Wahab, mentioned that the exercise is part of government's commitment to reclaim all ungoverned spaces that dot the Lagos landscape. According to the commissioner, the shanties serve as a hiding place for criminals and points for peddling hard drugs and substances, which is injurious to the well-being of law-abiding residents. We just have to remove all these shanties from our environment. And most of the shanties, you can see that they are, they are built close to the canal, which is not, uh, even for their health, it's not even good. So the government has taken, this, uh, has taken a stand. They don't want anything under the bridge in Lagos, except those ones approved by the government. The commissioner gave a time frame of 21 days to clear all the infractions under the bridges in Lagos. We've cleared some before. So we just, and we have, the major ones that we have, they are not really much. We'll keep on clearing, we'll keep on clearing. But Away from that, the federal government says it is aware of false alarms being raised in some quarters, alleging discussions between the federal government of Nigeria and some foreign countries on the sighting of foreign military bases in the country. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, in a statement on Monday, asked the general public to disregard the story. He said government is not in any such discussion with any foreign country or considering any proposals from any country on the establishment of any foreign military bases in Nigeria. Mr. Idris adds that Nigerian government already enjoys foreign cooperation in tackling ongoing security challenges, and the president remains committed to deepening these partnerships with the goal of achieving the national security objectives of the Renewed Hope Agenda. Now to other matters. The electricity distribution companies in Nigeria, also known as the DISCOs, have commenced reduction in tariffs for Band A customers. The DISCOs, in notices to customers on Monday, said the move was in support of improved service delivery to customers under the specified category. The Keja Electric, in its earlier notice, said the significant tariff adjustment is aimed at enhancing electricity accessibility and affordability for customers. It said the Band A customers had been slashed to 206 Naira 80 Kobo per kilowatt hour from the 225 Naira per kilowatt hour as approved by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission effective Monday 6th of May. Subsequently, a co-electricity distribution company and the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company also sent a similar notice to their customers, saying the development was in alignment with a cost-reflective tariffs framework introduced in 2020. The tariffs for bands B, C, D, and E customers remain unchanged. In Kora State, the Minister of Communication, Innovation, and Digital Economy, Boso Tijani, has commended the commitment of Governor Abdurrahman Abdurazak for making the dream of grooming three million technology talents a reality. The minister who was represented by the community manager for the initiative, Ibrahim Zukifuli, was speaking in Elori at the graduation ceremony for the three million technology talents and the launch of Quara Digital Economy Platform. He described the support of the state government as huge and commended Governor Abdurazak's partnership in building and transforming effective learners from the projects. The 3MTT training program is an initiative of the federal government, which the Kwa State uh, government first keyed into. Governor Abdurazak said the ceremony is a sign of commitment of its administration to transforming Kwa State into a digital economy. So we're going to have a lot of uh, digital transformation when it comes to business you know, innovation. And that's why we have a, a stakeholder engagement in Quara. Last month we had that. So we have, we have the synergy, we have the collaborative effort to ensure that uh, uh, everything is going like smoothly. You know, this is a state that uh, prior to now was regarded likely as a civil servant state. And you know the series of uh, multi-billionaire investment the governor has put in place in the last five years to make sure that we transform from 
the analog to digital economy. My encouragement to the youth really is to be, I mean, to be ready, to be adaptable, and to, you know, uh, uh, key into this innovation. Of course, uh, people who will be literate in the 21st century are people, in my own uh, definition, people who cannot use technology. We're giving about um, 20 laptops to the top 20 uh, best graduating students in this program. We're also supporting the initiative with additional 70 laptops for the second court. Away from that, the federal government has pledged to provide young, talented entrepreneurs with a platform to showcase their innovative ideas, knowledge and skills in information and communication technology. Speaking in Sakotel during the hackathon for talented ICT startups, entrepreneurs across northern Nigeria, Secretary of the Universal Service Provision Fund, Yomi Arushafe said young entrepreneurs presented innovative ideas in 10 focus areas, eight of which speak to the presidential priority areas. According to him, the hackathon in Sakoto is aimed at picking the best innovative idea for future incubation and connecting the youth entrepreneur with potential investors to develop the idea into product to solve social and economic development challenges. The Universal Service Provision Funds is an arm of the Nigeria Communications Commission created by the federal government to provide ICT access to rural, underserved, and unserved areas, as well as to facilitate social inclusion. All the northern states are encouraged, we are encouraged to um, come for, to pitch whatever they have as ideas, skills, knowledge, with respect to um, ICT in about 10 focus areas, AI, FinTech, e-health, um, education, agri, and many others, just 10 items. And the, the theme of the hackathon that we are talking about is think it, build it, and innovate it. Elsewhere, Osho State Government is calling for peaceful coexistence among residents asking them to shun all forms of violence. The State Deputy Governor, Kola Adewusi, stated this at the presentation of staff of office at the instrument of appointment to the new Elende of Ekwende in Oshun State. We have details in this report. Ekwende is a rural community in a federal local government area of Oshun State. Following the demise of its traditional ruler last year, the state government recently ordered the commencement of process to select a new monarch. Here is the presentation of staff of office and instrument of appointment to the new monarch of Abdwahid Adekunle. The state government expressed joy with the residents of the community for being peaceful. There is no gain saying the fact that this occasion is made possible because of the cooperation and peaceful coexistence of the people of this community. I am therefore appealing to all the people of this local council to shun acts of violence and continue to sustain and keep the existing peace. One of the tasks ahead of the monarch is to unite his people. My advice for him is for him to carry along members of the community in whatever he does. And they should focus more on development. And I want him to dwell much on the influence of the people by carrying the people along to whatever he does. I wish him success. I wish him longevity. The new Elaine, day of Eko in the land, will definitely make a difference because it's well educated and uh, highly respected among his mates. He's a chartered accountant and uh, he will bring his uh, knowledge to bear. The monarch promised that the community will witness maximization of its full potentials during his reign. To have the sense of belonging, the opportunity the Almighty God gives us in this land are enormous. We have landed property, we have water resources in which I pray to Almighty God to give me strength to take all this advantage, all this natural heritage we have in the town to convert it to economic value within a short period of time. I want to turn my town to small Dubai, even to small London in the near future. Residents were also encouraged 
to give the new king utmost needed support to governize the development of the community. Rafiu Hamid, TVC News, Ikuindi, Ocean State.